Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I hit the recording uh, feature, so that'll be on, and then uh, I can just email you. What I usually do is I upload it to YouTube and then just create a private link and then just email it to you. Okay. Oh, perfect. Because okay. there's no other way. I guess you could probably use Dropbox or something like that, but Dropbox, I don't, I'm not a big, it doesn't really work well for me. Okay, no problem. The but it won't, it won't be public. And by the way, even yeah, if you are concerned, I don't think our conversation is going to go viral by, by any means. <laughs> Uh, I don't think so either. No, but uh, tell me, I was excited when you when you called because I've been thinking a lot about you. I've been meaning to uh, reach out. How are uh, how are things going? Good. I mean, we're you know we're actually getting to first time cleaning capacities, which are about about sixty cans a day. Um, just because the first time you clean them, they just take a lot longer and they take a lot more water. So um, I'm trying to I'm trying to develop just more efficient ways to, to clean them, um, and then also sort of maybe adjust the expectation level a little bit because you know when we first started <clears throat> when we first started, I didn't have a lot of clients. I could spend a lot of time on each one, but now. I'm sort of developing like this. I don't know. I guess standard that that says, okay, after after X number of minutes or whatever, that's it. You know, that's 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 what you get, right? And um, you know, because the service is really designed for a reoccurring service. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's kind of like you know, it's kind of like putting a, a dish out in the sun for a couple of years and putting in a dishwasher and running it through the rinse cycle, it's just not, you know, I mean, it's just a, a, not a very um, realistic expectation for it to come out spotless. That, that's a good so, analogy, by the way, too, because like, oh, I haven't cleaned my cans in, uh, <laughs> in well, years, now um, I'm going to pay 10 bucks and uh, expect, you know, it. I'll right. be able to eat off of it. Well, so the so the other company, the other company in Southern California, when they place, so when you go through their website, if you place um, an order for the keep them clean in front of you, that's going to be a, a monthly plan, and um, you basically go through the checkout and they'll send you a, a, a notification saying we're going to be there every month and they'll get better and blah 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 blah. But if you go the other route and you go for a one-time clean. It basically comes up with a different path that says, it basically explains this thing, right? It says, you know, we're going to do the best that we can. We're going to put them through the machine three or four times, um, you know, but they set an expectation that, you know, it, it may not get clean. And then at the end of that dialogue, there's a, there's a box that says, would you be, would you consider continuing on after the first service? Yes, no, maybe. Well, if it's a maybe, the next month before they send out the um, the truck into that neighborhood, they give them a call and just say, "Hey, you know, we noticed that you know you shown some interest in possibly having us come back uh, on a regular basis. Do you want us to send the truck to your your house?" So it's kind of a follow up uh, add on sale tool that they have. Got it. And does that work well for them? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what what kind of closure they rates they have, but it does. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, and it also, I think it also probably minimizes the complaint calls because, you know, the, I mean, the, sometimes sometimes these things are so bad. You know, it's just, it's, I mean, I feel bad. I mean, I, I I feel bad leaving on not looking like brand new, but. You know, they're so, so bad sometimes, and they look so much better, but just not to the standard that I want to have them at. So managing expectations is is key? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's definitely, yeah, I think so. So Jason, tell me uh, tell me what, what's working now. Like, what, do, what, do you, what, uh, what, what seems to be working for you? So what we're doing right now, up until a few days ago, is we're, we're, we're doing the marketing, um, 
going behind the um, the garbage trucks, and we're tagging all the cans that are out during <coughs> all the cans that are out during uh, each day, um, and we're getting decent responses out of that. I mean that that I mean that's basically all we're doing. We're doing uh, we've done a couple of Facebook book things, one to promote the video and one when we launched in um, Dublin and we've actually got some results out of that. People asking, oh, you know, come to Pleasant, uh, come to Livermore, come to Alameda, come to blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I think it's, it's sort of reaching, but it's hard for me to quantify, you know, what that really, what the net effect of that is. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not like there's a, you know, an audit trail that leads to a, to, to an order. Um, when you place an order in our website, it um, when you place an order in our website, it uh, will ask, you know, how did you hear about us? And there's a drop-down menu with various different. Uh, Options: flyer, uh, Facebook, yell, refer by friend. But that's not going to tell you anything because the first time they, you know, it's not like they're seeing a Facebook ad and they're going to come there and be like, "Oh, I found you on Facebook." It's like they're going to see the brand. You know, you're going to, you know, for a service like this, you're going to have to touch them more times than once, and then they're never going to remember when they first met you. It's kind of like if somebody calls you, "Oh, here, what did you hear about me?" Oh, I did a Google search. Well, what keyword did you search, and when did you search, and how many searches did you do, and then did you visit my Yelp page before you called my, you know, phone number, and then did you look at my Facebook page, and how many pages of, of the website did you visit? But with good analytics, you can track all of that. Right. So when you did your Facebook ad. You sent them to a landing page, whatever the Facebook ad was. You didn't send them to your home page. You sent them to a page on your website which talked more about whatever the ad was about. Um, <clears throat> I don't know who we did any of that. We just posted the ad and, and, and did a little like a little ten mile radius thing um, around the city of Dublin. Um, and I don't know whether that generated much of anything. And then you uh, hopefully you targeted only homeowners. Yeah, I think I, uh, Greg, my wife just joined us. Jill, Greg, Greg, Jill. Hey, Greg. Jill, how are um, you? Uh, pretty good. Cool. Well, thanks uh, for uh, joining in. Um, I think the criteria that we utilized was over 30, I think. And I think over 30, and within the, the, the 10 mile radius of, um, of Dublin. Yep. I see. So, have you done, um, you know, besides the Facebook ads and besides, you know, tagging the cans behind the, the garbage trucks as they come along, those two seem like good, good strategies. What, uh, what else seems to be, to be working in terms of, acquisition of new customers or at least generating interest well we do get a lot of we do get responses from the truck and just and referral uh, you know just word of mouth stuff I mean I guess that's sort of really the the, the re word of mouth referrals and the, the truck would be you know a distant second to the tagging oh yeah this is definitely a word of mouth Whereas I'm going out and grabbing my cans and I'm like, hey, neighbor, who's that? What's that truck that was? What is that? And then yeah. it's going to be, yeah, yeah, here's the, here's the card. And then, you know what I mean? Even if you can put some type of, hey, mention my house, my address, and, you know, they're going to give me a Starbucks card and I'll take you out for coffee or whatever it might be. You know, getting some type of uh, kickback to anything you can do to enhance word of mouth is, is just huge. Well, yeah. So what we what we do what we have done is so when I send out a um, order confirmation, basically what happens is that you'll get an automatic response from the website, basically saying, you know, someone from the Canards will be contacting you shortly, and then we'll send out 
a more formal letter saying we're going to be servicing your cans on this day, we're going to be doing these cans, and um, it sort of wraps up by saying, you know, if you're delighted with the with the with the uh, service, we hope you place the ultimate compliment by referring you referring us to friends or, or posting a positive review on social media. And then once and if you do that, we'll come back to you, we'll come back to your house next month and clean a can one can for free. Nice. And that's generated. That's gener This definitely generated some reviews, and and from those reviews, things like Yelp. Um, I'm sorry, not Yelp, but um, Next Door uh, have definitely generated leads. I'm not so sure about Yelp. I mean, it's, they you got five they five reviews on Yelp, and the Next Door would be like a good one to uh, to hit. Yeah, and I actually contacted Next Door about doing some. Some marketing through them, and they were super expensive. Yeah, I imagine because you know, I mean, they're really getting access to that neighborhood, and um, I, I would imagine that like Nextdoor and you know Thumbtack and some of these you know companies that have raised millions and millions of dollars are probably doing pretty well. Um, so Jason, what I've been doing is I've been asking a lot of people, friends and families and um, parents at the school, you know, hey, what do you what do you think about this business? You know, a truck that comes behind, you know, whatever your trash pickup, our trash pickup days today, um, you know, hey, would you ever pay for somebody to come by and clean your, your barrows? And hey, it's, you know, eco-friendly. You don't have to use your hose, you know, it gets rid of all those flies, would cut down the neighborhood. And the funny thing is, whenever you ask people something, they're always like, heck yeah, I'd pay for that. Be like, okay, uh, well, you know, I'll take your credit card right now. Oh no, 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 no I'm not paying for that. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like everyone loves the idea, but I guess the challenge is, you know, are people going to pay for it? And um, mm -hmm. I think from that other company that you mentioned here in SoCal, you know, people are paying for it, and people do like the service. Um, yeah, I mean, they're they're. Probably they're probably in the 150 can a day to 200 can a day range. So you know they're and, they're, and they seem to have a lot of uh, they seem to have a lot of um, repeat you know monthly customers. One of the things that we we've sort of experienced is there's a bit of a barrier going from a one-time clean to a monthly clean, um, and I'm assuming it's the price tag, the price point of you know one-time charge. Um, and we're about to do, or well, we're basically offering now quarterly service or every other month service. Um, and then we'll just we just basically build the credit card the month before service, the last day of the month before service. Gotcha. Um, and it's, I'm going to be working on building a a follow up contact with the with customer to offer that, um, whether it be email or or an automated phone or text or whatever. I mean, the thing is, we have the contact information. We know how they want to get contacted because. When you fill out the order form, you put all that information in, um, and we when we communicate with the client the day before, so we have that contact information. So, you know, in theory, every month, I suppose, or every other month, you could say, "Hey, our trucks are going to be in your neighborhood, you know, this next week. Would you like us to go ahead and add you to our route?" I mean, there's another, you know, marketing strategy that that will hopefully you know, bear fruit. Yes. So Jason, Joe, what I love about this business is that it's very, very simple. Uh, and you know, you're not trying to convince people to like, Hey, this is, you know, a social network where you can connect with friends and family and it's this, that, and the other thing. And you know, it's, you know, here's how it's going to make your life easier and download the app and this sort of thing. It's just like, we're going to come by and clean your cans. 
And I think it, the metrics associated with the business, you know, what does it cost to acquire a customer? What are the channels? When I say channels, you know, think of pay-per-click, think of, you know, walking behind the, the trucks, tagging cans, uh, you know, uh, local newspapers, you know, what does it cost to acquire a customer? And then what's the average lifetime value of a customer? And if you know what your cost is to acquire a customer and if you can consistently work on that metric and then you also know the average lifetime value you know those two key metrics would be key and then what you can do is launch very very specific hyper local geographic based areas and if you can get that model to work then it'll work on other areas you know i, I always kind of look at like facebook facebook said you know let's just launch this thing at harvard and harvard is and i'm just going to use facebook not a good example but we all know a facebook and we all know the story that you know maybe launch at harvard and be like hey wow this thing is kind of doing well and people kind of like these profiles you know let's go to stanford and let's just go you know okay well let's just do Silicon Valley and then let's just, you know, go on and, you know, and stepping stone. Now it's like, all right, now let's just provide internet access to the entire world and, you know, get everybody on, get every person on Facebook. But that's kind of what I like about the business. Uh, what's some of your feedback on just kind of my 10,000 foot view? Yeah. Well, we just need to make that happen. <laughs> that's the challenge. <laughs> Yes, and I think it is a marketing and a technology play regarding, you know, just taking in the, you know, making the assumption that one, the trucks work, two, you know, given the pricing model, you know, it kind of makes sense if we get up to say, you know, 150 cans a day and, you know, people actually like the service, then it's really just a, a technology play where it's, all right, how can we process these credit cards on a monthly basis? You know, how can we keep customers happy? And, you know, how can we continue to, to, to grow? And the growing is, you know, not, you know, it, it's just based upon geography. So then if you can get good marketing in place in terms of, you know, carpet bombing a particular zip code, like, for instance, you know, I was using, you know, I'm here in Manhattan Beach. So to get market penetration on a city which has the wealth associated with it, we all have garbage cans. They all get picked up weekly. We all have trash. You know, and then so to test a service like this within Manhattan Beach, one, it wouldn't cost a lot of money. And then two, you know, you have the different channels that you can test, whether it be Twitter, whether it be newsletters, whether it be the newspaper, whether it be, um, you know, Facebook, whether it be, you know, all the different channels, you know, you can get a word out within a, uh, a four mile radius very, very easily. Just think of next door, you know, I mean, message. You know, what, what's the population of Manhattan Beach? I don't even know. Maybe 30,000, 30, four-mile radius? I don't know. I could look that up. But anyway, you get the idea. And then after you blanket that area with all of your marketing techniques, based upon the conversion data, you're going to know if it works or if it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same. Do you guys ever follow Patch? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So patch was kind of a cool concept, which was a hyper local website and it was bought eventually bought by AOL. Now they're out of business, but they went really, really hard at it. And, you know, every city had had their own patch. So the first city that they moved into in all of the West Coast was Manhattan Beach. And then they launched, you know, here and then, you know, they, they would hire a writer for every single city. So, you know, like, I don't know your, geog I should know your geography better because I spent time there. My brother lives in Dublin, but they would take a city like Dublin and they would hire a writer, $40,000. And then that writer would have to do three stories on Dublin every single day. And that model didn't work, but it was similar to your business. It's just kind of, all right, let's get into a market and let's test it. They were selling advertising. At least you have a service behind it that creates value. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, I mean so, so. I mean next door is fine, but how do you how do you how do you advertise on next door without paying them three grand a month, which is what they were looking for? Well, you know, you want to, you know, you so you one, you need a budget. But if it was me, and if I'm my my business, but granted, I'm a marketer, so I'm a lot different than you. But if I was to launch this as a concept, and by the way, we're just brainstorming here, so I'm just going to fly off the, off the cuff. 
but you know i would build a page which says something like you know coming to a city near you or let's just call it dublin i know dublin a little bit because my my brother lives there but i would create a page on my website which says you know canology launching dublin in two weeks you know early sign up you know knock three dollars off you know put a little cross through this knock three dollars off anyone interested you know sign up now and then what you would do is you'd have that particular page on your website and then you have to drive traffic to that page you know i mean you have a beautiful website you know you have your about us so then now you have a t specific geography so the, you know, and I'll just rattle these things off. These are just top of the mind type things. But okay, you know, who in Dublin has the biggest following on Twitter? So you go to follower wonk and you type in Dublin and it tells you how many followers the, the number one person has in Dublin. Now, they might be a writer or somebody in technology, but again, they still live there. Um, what is the, the, the local Dublin newspaper? You know, how can I contact them and maybe get a free article, some free PR? Um, let's go to Facebook and let's target people who live in Dublin, who own homes, who are Republican, who are female, but, you know, who, you know, have interest in, you know, green living or whatever it might be. Just like super, super specific who also like surfing, whatever it might be. You do that on Facebook and then you throw some uh, some money at Google and tar target only people in Dublin and then you, you you launch a little bit of a branding campaign. You also do some remarketing associated to that particular page. So if anybody ever goes to that page, they go back to ESPN.com, they're gonna see Canology for the next two weeks, which is you know a form of remarketing. Um, you know, maybe you do some Yelp ads specific to Dublin. You know, you tweet every single day using the Dublin hashtag. I find the number one most influential person in Dublin who's on Instagram and say, hey. I'll give you a percentage of the profit. You know, I'm just launching this. Can you face, I mean, can you uh, Instagram me, you know, four or five times in, in the month and I'll give you a hundred bucks or I'll buy you coffee or whatever type of deal we have. But all we're doing is just trying to target that Dublin area. Then, you know, if you can run around the town, you know I mean? If you're local, I would hit, uh, you know, Dublin. They have every single restaurant chain known to man. So you know, hit, hit all of those parking lots. But you get the idea. I'm just doing all this guerrilla marketing specific to Dublin. And then I'm building all of this, you know, brand awareness. And then I'm just going to test and measure every single aspect related to that launch. And Dublin's a pretty small city. And where am I getting traction from? So that, that's just a couple of ideas. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> I mean, it sounds good. Are you doing a lot of that now? No, no. We are. Um, we are just doing the things that we we talked about earlier. And so anything. those are just a handful of things that I would potentially do for, you know, a launch of a city. And what I love about it is, like, we're, we, you know, we have a very specific target market that we are looking to go after and we're going to know if our message is being received well or if people are just ignoring it and how do you how do you how do you quantify that i mean how do you how do you measure that uh so i would measure it in number of impressions meaning like how many people are we reaching within that uh demo demographic area um, how many visits are we getting to the Dublin page? How many people are opting in to get more information? Up oh, sorry about that. I started hearing this little ad. Um, you know, how many people are opting in to get, you know, early, uh, early notification of the service or how many people are, are ordering the service? How many people are, you know, I mean, clicking on the service? plans and actually looking at the pricing. Um, I also have, you know, how many people are calling about it? You know, I would, I would create call to action buttons. So if we're bringing people over, which you do all those activities, you're going to be bringing people over, you know, looking at the heat map, how many people are figuring out how it works, you know, create a small offer like, Hey, you know, you might not be ready for service, but if you're, you know, 5% interested, give me your email and I'll send you an offer or whatever it might be.
So we can set up anything that we want related to what I call KPIs, which are key performance indicators. Generally, my three biggest KPIs are how much money am I spending? How many leads are, am I getting? A lead is just somebody giving their contact information. And then what's my conversion rate? So in other words, how many people do I need to get to get a particular lead? And then once we get a lead, um, you know, they, I own them. I, I get their email address. I follow them on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube and Pinterest. I remarket to them. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I know their household income. I know everything once they once 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 they get into my sphere. <laughs> That's that's why when you uh, you look something up on Amazon for the next two weeks, every website you go on has the whatever whatever that is. You guys know that I work with plumbing companies, so when I get a call from a plumbing company, you know the first thing I do is I apologize. I'm like I'm I'm sorry, you know you've you've been on my list for uh, for about six months now, and I I kind of jokingly say that, but you know meaning that. They're getting my emails delivered to them automatically. I'm remarketing to them on, on Facebook. I've already liked them and friended them on Facebook. I'm following them on Twitter. We're connected on LinkedIn. Uh, if they go do ESPN, they're going to see one of my ads related to my plumbing services because they're an owner of a plumbing company. I provide marketing to plumbing companies. So therefore, you know, I'm never going to go away. I'm going to invite you to my webinar next week. <laughs> so that's why I always apologize jokingly. <laughs> is that your main customer base is plumbing companies? Yes. Yeah. A previous life <laughs> for me. Yeah. And we've been able to get some pretty darn amazing results. And, and it's very similar to this, whereas a plumbing company, they, you know, one of the number one most valuable things that we do for our clients is we cut down on their windshield time. Do you know what I mean when I say that? No. So here in California, you know, it might be a, a plumbing company who, so I've, I've done some work in, in Silicon Valley. So Silicon Valley is is a pretty big area. Mm -hmm. uh, and then most plumbing companies are like, yeah, we service Silicon Valley. We'll go all the way up to Dublin. We'll go all the way down to Pleasanton. We'll go out to Livermore and out to all these different cities. Well, that's one, cutting down on the response time from customers. Two, it is um, costing them more money in gasoline. Three, they spend you know more more time behind the the windshield, whereas and then they're spending six thousand dollars a month on advertising for all of Silicon Valley. Let's just be a big fish in a small pond, and let's just have you service the Pleasanton area. Mm -hmm. So let's take all your advertising and let's just be the number one company within Pleasanton. And then related to plumbing, uh, never have a problem with demand. Demand is you know people looking for a good local plumbing company. So I have many, many examples of, you know, plumbing companies that used to service LA. Now they only work uh, two beach cities and they've doubled their amount of uh, revenue and they have a better quality of life. They spend mo less money on gas. And when you spend less money behind that windshield, that's, you know, more money that uh, you are using to impact your bottom line. Just think less wear and tear on the truck. Your, your tools aren't being stolen, driving out to Compton, whatever it might be. So... Um, that's why I really like your, your business in targeting a super, super hyper local area and then testing the living crap out of it to see how many customers we can get. Well, I guess, I guess, I mean, I like the, I like the concept. It's hard for me to do, to sort of get, wrap my head around, you know, all the moving parts of that, but I get, I get the, you know, the meta view of it. Um, so I, I guess I guess trying to figure out the demographics of various different cities might be a good start. Now, do you have the the, the I'm assuming you have the the tools to figure that out. What the demographics are in any given city? Uh, yeah, Google AdWords. Have you ever done any AdWords? No. So, uh. Jill, are you familiar with AdWords? 
I mean, I'm familiar with AdWords, but I don't work in an industry that advertises that way, so you know, I haven't used it. Yeah, so one of the reasons why I like um, AdWords is because it tells you what the reach is for any given any given city. But you can do any Google searches on a particular zip code and find the, the population, find the reach. I imagine your, your business is also pertains to what type of um, you know, trash company services that area, whether it be waste management or one of the other big ones. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question again? Um, does your service depend upon... Um, no, it doesn't, it's not dependent on the hauler, I mean, other than the fact that, you know, some haulers will allow us to, some haulers, you know, don't have a problem with us at fixing stuff to cans, and apparently some do now. So, yeah. I mean, that's that would be the only thing. But I, I think in general, there's no issue as far as actually cleaning the can. Yeah, because you know what's funny? When people come out here um, to visit us, they look at all these garbage cans, and they're like, what in the world is that? How come everybody has the same garbage cans? I'm like, you guys don't have that? They're like, no, we still have the round little barrels that we need to drag out, the, the aluminum ones. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, I think these uh, are all mandatory in California. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think in this, uh, certainly in the Bay Area, I don't know of a city that doesn't have um, the wheeled carts. Yes. Uh, so what I, yeah, so to find the demographic and, you know, to pick a p particular city, that's not hard, you know, and then to focus in with that, in that area, it's not that hard. I just want to show you a quick example of a spreadsheet that I can send you, which is called a digital marketing system. Okay. Can you still see my screen here? Yeah, I can see it, yeah. So this is like in a system that, you know, you can just download. It's just a spreadsheet, just kind of like the spreadsheets that you shared with me. But this is all re pertaining to marketing. And the way that we break this out is it works from left to right. You know, you, you set a couple goals in terms of, you know, how many cans do you want to get to per day? How many new customers? You know, what's the average revenue per customer? Average lifetime value of a customer? And you can kind of track that from a goals perspective. And then you just have this spreadsheet here where you, you kind of set some of your key metrics, KPIs. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm looking at it. So it's like, you know, kind of like, all right, what's my budget? You know, here's – this is more specific to e-commerce, but it's not too far off. You can kind of get the idea. You know, how much traffic am I getting? You know, how many impressions am I getting? You know, what's my social media reach? And then conversion is, you know, how many phone calls are we getting or, or how many inbound leads are we getting? You know, what's our conversion rate? Conversion rate is just the number of visits divided by how many leads you get. This is just an example. This is not your numbers. Um, and then, you know, the total cost per lead, you know, is how much money am I spending divided by how many leads am I getting? And leads could be orders. Leads could be, you know, email addresses or it can be all things combined. But then you get down to, you know, total profit, you know, how much money did we build? So you can kind of play around with some of these spreadsheets. But then we move more into the market and that's more your dashboard you know, you figure out who the target market persona is. And most importantly, you know, the your persona might be, I imagine it's going to be homeowners, but here would be, you know, geography would probably be the number one criteria. They have to live in Dublin, you know, for me to go after this target market persona. And maybe they need to own a home and maybe they need to be, um, you know, a hundred, hundred thousand dollar plus, or maybe I only want CIOs within Dublin who are of the ages of 45 to 65. The more specific that you can get, the better off you can be. And the reason why we can target CEOs or C-level executives within Dublin who make a certain income, I can go to LinkedIn and show you every single CEO who lives in Dublin. And that might be who we're looking to go after. And I can get their email address and I can add them to a marketing campaign to see if they convert. But you get the idea with the target market personas. You got to figure out what your best performing keywords are and then add that to a city. So you set up a campaign for Dublin, you know, mm -hmm. trash can cleaner, clean, uh, can cleaner, Dublin, you know, very, very specific keywords. And you put them in Google and you run ads associated with them. An example might be, um, hey, my neighbor, I just saw my neighbor 
get his trash cans clean come today while I'm bringing my barrels back to my house. So I'm going to go back to my computer because I'm an introvert and I'm going to type in Manhattan Beach uh, Trash Can Cleaning Company. And you can see I don't spell very, very well. Manhattan Beach Trash Can Cleaning Company. And I'm going to get waste management, but I'm going to get cleanyourbin.com. Let's take a look at what that is. You know, so here I get a site, and I get cleanyourbin.com, and I don't see anything where related. They? Let's take a look where are they where are they where are they? So they don't really exist. They're in uh, Woodland Hills, which is two and a half hours away. <laughs> But this this leads me to believe that if you <laughs> I might just start a, a website which is you know clean your uh, Manhattan Beach trash cleaning company and then I'll refer the business or I'll start collecting all the leads of people that are interested in it so I'll, I'll create a fictitious company because there's some good opportunity here so no, there's nobody who will come by and clean my trash cans um, here's OC cleaning company again so here these guys are all right cool you're nine four nine you don't service Manhattan Beach so. Um, I'm Let's, screwed, so now I got to go back to my neighbor and ask. Um, but here's another one right here. This is the beach reporter. So trash, trash can created by Manhattan Beach resident. So here's a, I know this girl. Uh, she's in the the school system. She raised like some amount of money. Goes to show how easy it is to get money in nowadays. But she raised some amount of money for this eco-friendly trash can. This was a story about a year and a half ago. Or back in um, the 18th, I remember. So anyway, that's exactly the way that it would work. But back to the digital marketing plan that I have set up for you. You got to know your just, key, keywords by the city. So let me just ask you something, and because that's kind of an interesting example. So you know, you, you spend whatever money it is, you know, advertising, and then all of a sudden, so this this guy is getting. A click through to their website to a cust for a customer that's two and a half hours away. That doesn't do that any good, and they'd probably pay for that, right? No, they're not paying for this because there are zero for Manhattan Beach Trash Can Cleaning Company. There are zero pay per click ads. See all this white space over here? Oh, that's what that's what that, that's what gets propagated if it's yeah. There if are, there was a hit. Okay, okay, so, but let's let's just see if I can get a, an ad triggered. So right here, Mr. Clean, trash yeah. can cleaner, um, Mr. Tight or Try Tidy. This is that company that I was telling you about, who uh, you should totally talk to. So uh, I know these guys pretty well. Unfortunately, I just clicked on their ad. So Tidy is a house cleaning company. All right. Yeah. Um, and the guy's an internet marketer who launched it, and he's not returning my phone calls, but he put a postcard on every single home in Manhattan Beach and got about a 15% conversion rate. Which I think he's lying, but you know, for ninety nine dollars, you can have somebody. It's kind of the Uber of, you know, house cleaning. You know, on demand house cleaning. There's everything on demand now, anyway. Um, but so now you know your keywords. You have to have all your online profiles built. And by the way, I can email this to you. You've heard of all of these sites before. Nextdoor is on here. Foursquare, Facebook, Thumbtack. You know, nearby now, LinkedIn, Google Plus, Pinterest. Have you built all your profiles yet? Um, what is the profile? <laughs> all right. So number one. Oh yeah, like what you get up and Yelp and Twitter, Facebook. We have yeah. Yeah, you need every uh, single one of these built. You know, the way that I, I I encourage business owners to do it is every night while you're watching uh, TV. I don't think anybody watches TV anymore. But do two per night and get your username, your password, and your profile. We do this for our clients. So even if you just want us to do this for you. But you need every single one of these listings because this is all a form of uh, search marketing. And, you know, you have to have an Instagram account. You have to have a Pinterest account. You know, you have to have Dig Delicious. And then there's hundreds of hundreds of other companies. But, you know, obviously Google Local Business and Yelp and Merchant Circle and Insider Pages and all of these. You just build a profile on all of them. Okay. It, it's kind of like signing up with uh, the yellow pages. Mm. You know, back before the internet, all you did was you know, get the biggest ad you could afford in the yellow pages, and then your phone rang. 
You, you guys use the yellow pages, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, in heating and air conditioning, it rang too much when, when you couldn't service them. Right? Exactly. So this is the yellow pages of the Internet. Uh, the next thing you know is you create a bunch of content related to your business. Content is just a tweet, a Facebook post, you know, getting new, fresh, relevant content on your social channels, you know, every day or every week, whatever you can afford. You can automate everything that it is that I'm, that I'm uh, sharing with you. All this can be automated. Then you keep track of how big you are from a social media perspective. In other words, how many likes do you have on Facebook? You have 56 likes. How big are you on Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram? Because that's another currency of the business. You know, how big of an email list do you have? Uh, so you keep track of that and hopefully that grow, you know, all that grows on a monthly basis. Then you, you know, create some, some content. Then you publish that content. You do a little bit of competitive analysis. You don't need any, to do any competitive analysis because you don't have any competitors. And then the last piece is uh, what's called influence marketing. And these are kind of your people who know you, they like you, and they trust you, and they also have what's called social media reach. Do you know what social media reach is? A lot of friends. Uh, well, so, well, just social media reach is you have a high cloud score. You have a couple thousand Twitter followers. You have you know, a lot of people on LinkedIn. You have 50,000 people who like your Facebook page. You're active on Google+. Plus. You're on Pinstagram. And you, every time you post a picture on – or you're active on Pinterest. And every time you post a uh, picture on Instagram, you know, you get uh, 50,000 people liking it. Or not 50,000, but call it 50 people liking it. Because the reason is, is when you need a favor or when you need to launch a city – or when you need to get the word out within that city, if you have five people that are big mouths in that city and they also have an email list of people within that city, um, then you can tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, can I, can I take you to lunch next week if you tweet about me and share the fact that we're launching this city or whatever it might be. That's called influential marketing. Kim Kardashian gets paid $120,000 for her to uh, open up a product on her Instagram account. Crazy. Yeah, I'd like to be her. I'm not sure if I do. That was a lot of honor. <laughs> yeah. Be careful what you wish for, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> True. But here's, here's just a spreadsheet. You know, if you know that if you're hitting on every single one of these tabs, you understand you know your people, you understand your, your keywords, you, know, you have your, your yellow pages set up, you're posting a bunch related to all the hashtags that are popular within that particular town on all the social media platforms, your audience is, is growing, you, know, you have uh, campaigns set up like, like success stories, your campaigns are just other people reviewing your business, featuring those, you have some good content, how you're changing the world, changing the environment, you know, whatever it might be, soon your trucks are going to be self-driving, trash can cleaning trucks, blah, 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 and then you have influencers to help get that message out, you're crushing it or at least people know about you. And to get people to buy, they need to know, like, and trust you. So this covers the know. The like is providing a good service, and then the trust is retaining those customers. Wow. Like a lot of work. <laughs> I've had a little too much coffee today, I think. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's just that, uh, you know, it's like trying to drink out of a fire hose. It's, it's a... It's a little hard to drink it all. Um, okay, so I mean, for so what is the what would you recommend as far as how to start? I mean, that seems like a lot to to digest. Um, like an implementation strategy for that. I mean, and how much of that stuff can you do versus? What we would need to do and so we're we're full service we do all of this stuff so every single one of these tabs is taken care of by us 
No, well, your, your business is different. So it's not like you have, you know, 15 plumbing trucks and you're looking to service a 10 mile radius and, you know, you're already generating 30 phone calls. You're more in like the startup phase. So I've never really worked, you know, with, with somebody like yourself. But, you know, I would say take one. The average, the average sales price of, of this service is more like, you know, $25, $30, not $500. Yeah. True. That's that's the yeah that's the challenge right it's it's the lower being able to, item right you need many many customers but yeah many customers uh, but you know and if they're if they're annual you know if they're doing it every month then that's a few hundred dollars but it's just a little different. So that's one of the biggest challenges in the business is you have a low ticket item which means you need high volume. Right. Now, have you really, you know, I'm not sure if I'm using this term correctly, but I, I, you know, carpet bombed a particular city to see what type of conversion you can get? No. No. I mean, other than, other than the tags. And we've d actually done, I mean, like Pleasanton, we've hit. What's the know. city that you've hit the hardest? Pleasanton and Dublin are the two, uh, two, two, two big ones. So I'll go over to Physical. Dublin because my brother lives in Dublin. Can you see yeah, my? We just we actually just, we just launched in Dublin. We're getting good response out of Dublin. Um, and we've we've, so you're carpet, we've you've carpet bonded with paper. With paper, yeah. I mean, every so every single can in Dublin has had an advertising piece. Every single home. Yeah, I'm sorry, every home. Every yeah. home within Dublin? Yep. Oh, my God. I'm going to email my brother right now. My brother lives right here. Um, so every home got it. All right. How much traffic? See, can you see my screen here? Yeah. Um, if I go to your Google Analytics, how much traffic did you get in Dublin to your website? No idea. Well, your, your, your Google Analytics tells you exactly that. So you can go to your Google Analytics and pull up, you know, Dublin and see the exact traffic. And then so within your Google Analytics. Yeah, within your Google Analytics, it tells you of that traffic, you know, where did it come from? What's the IP address? Did they convert? How many pages did they view? And let me just make sure you have Google Analytics installed. Yeah, so you have this is you have Google Analytics installed right here. Okay. So do you know how to manipulate the data from that? Yeah, you just go to your Google Analytics account. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> All right. So okay. if you don't have Google Analytics, it's like fly, it's like driving down the freeway at 80 miles an hour without uh, a steering wheel. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, that sounds about right. So Google Analytics is your dashboard, and it tells you who's coming to your website, how are they getting there, what are they doing once they're there. Think about your website like a store in terms of um, you, we're going to put the milk in the back, and we're going to put the Tic Tacs up front next to the gossip magazines. So if I want to see, I'm just pulling up one website here, which I have, you know, I mean, thousands of these. And I want to see if anybody from Dublin, you know, California visited my particular website. Um, probably not within the last 30 days. But here I can see, you know, Redondo Beach, Huntington Beach, San Diego, Chino, you know, Roseville. And um, if you're launching in a particular city, you know, a statistic that you would look at is, you know, how many people are visiting that particular city? What are they doing once they're there? Where's my map right here? So basically, you'd be able to see how well Dublin's doing and what your conversion rate is of people that are in Dublin who are visiting your website. Okay. And Google Analytics is free, so that'd be, that'd be the first thing that I would set up, or the first thing that you should set up. The second thing is a question that I would ask. Okay, we launched Dublin. 
how many of those visitors from Dublin specifically came in direct from my website versus typing in a keyword in Google? I would say, I mean, I'm just guessing, but I'm just, I'm guessing, I imagine it's a very high percentage would be coming straight through because they're responding to a direct mail piece. And see, that's awesome that you say that because watch what happens me. I just went to go pick up my cans. I saw a Canology ad on my can, right? And so I have my typical browser set up here and I'm, I'm just pretending that I'm a user. I'm an advanced user, but I'm just pretending. And I just type in, so now I have my browser open. I got like 10, 15 tabs and I'm going to do this. Watch, watch what I do here. I, so can you see my screen? Yeah. I'm on Chrome. And again, I'm, I'm not your typical person, but you know, I'm going to type in right here and then it launches a tab for me. And now it just starts, so I can start typing here, Canology. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, oh, Canology. And if I'm working really fast, I might click on that one. Now remember, I saw the ad, it said try Canology. Uh, but I just, I, I, kept, I caught the name Canology. All right, now I'm looking closer. All right, this one's not it. This one's not it. This one's not it. So in your Google Analytics report, you would see that, Google was the traffic source and the keyword was Canology. And people don't know how to type, so they may have typed in kind of like me. See how I typed it in? Can mm -hmm. Canonology. And by the way, you should be taking an ad out for that misspelling. But then your Google Analytics will tell you. And then the verse the 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 converse of that would be. Someone would have to type in this. Check this one out. Canology.com. This one here is called direct traffic. Oh. So, and most times people are not typing in a dot .com. And even if they are, they're just doing this. And see how that's not direct traffic? Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I'm, I'm not even finding it right now. So, again, another really interesting. Uh, can you just click the back button on that for a second? Um, oh, no, okay. I was just wondering if you were getting anything, anything um, in the searches. That... And, again, I was just doing examples. Yeah. And then, you know, it comes up here, the science of uh, thing. So, anyway... Install Google Analytics so then you can snoop on who's doing what. Also, what would be kind of cool too is if you're doing a promotion, um, you know, you can do a real time live search of your existing website. So right now there's nobody on my website. But if somebody was, you know, or if somebody was to just Instagram a promotion, or if we were to do an email blast. I would be watching what's happening real time. And now this number should change. The fact is that, you know, I just brought somebody over to my website and then, you know, they started to visit other pages, you know, and you can, you can manage things in real time too, which tells you exactly how people are using your site. See that, so I now have one searcher and it's located here. And this is actually not me. This is somebody visiting this one. But anyway, yeah. you get the idea. Interesting. So, you know, I think that there's a really a good opportunity to take advantage of uh, a marketing from a, a digital standpoint. And I know I've been talking a lot in this meeting, but I just wanted to give you a kind of a glimpse into my world and what we could do for Kenology in terms of just making you extremely popular within a you know 10 mile radius. And Dublin's probably less than 10 miles. Yeah, no, I was, well, yeah, I mean, I would say that uh, if we're going to pick another, if we're going to pick a, pick a city, we'd probably want to, um, you know, go into an area that we haven't been into, right, so we can actually, you know. But why wouldn't, you, so let me, let me push back a little bit on that. Why wouldn't you just take Dublin and say for two months, we're going to do everything we can 
within this budget amount to reach every single person in Dublin? Well, I mean, I mean the fact that we've already reached everybody you know, with paper already, right? So you're basically trying to, um, you know, you're just trying to extract more out of that area that's, you know, the, 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 the easy stuff's already already came in, right? I mean, they've responded to the tag cleaning. Although, you know, the, the, there is the word of mouth stuff happening in the background, so it's a pretty small city, though. Yeah, smaller the better. That means your dollar will go that much longer. And you know that uh, what sales statistics are, right? 48% yeah. of people, you know, never buy from a pers uh, prospect on the first time. Well, this is more around salespeople. But, you know, 80% of sales are made after the 5th to 12th contact. 10% are made after the 4th, 5% are made after the 3rd, 3% are made after the 2nd, 2% are made after the 1st. You literally, from a sales and marketing standpoint, need to hit people over the head 15 times, or no, I'm sorry, 5, five no, 5 to 12 times before they even think about buying from you. Interesting. That's just, you know what I mean, so like doing a, mm -hmm. a little bit of spraying in a particular town and kind of hoping, you know, that's kind of spray and pray. You know, if the yellow pages wanted to be really affected, they should drop a, a book off every week. <laughs> they only fill up my green bin. I mean, my recycling bin. <laughs> that's why they yeah, actually, do it, bud. You know, I mean, why do you know, that? When you, when you listen to the radio, if you listen to the radio for eight hours, you're probably going to hear the same ad at least six or seven times. Right. Right. So if I was to really, you know, if I was in your shoes and if I was down here in Manhattan Beach, there's not, you know, I mean, I would just take, take Manhattan Beach as a case study because if people aren't going to buy, you know, trash cleaning services after I hit them over the head 12 times and they know me and they kind of like me, but they don't trust me and they don't buy from me, then I, then, you know, I got to move on. It's not like I'm going to try another city. So it's either what I love about your business is they're either going to buy, you know, or they're not. Mm -hmm, but there's mm -hmm. not a lot of maybes, you know, after you hit them 15 times. But the oh, way yeah. that I perceive marketing too is when I get something in the mail, I don't jump at it knowing that, well, they're going to hit me again next month. You know, and even if you do newspaper advertising, the first thing a newspaper advertising will tell you is don't take out one ad. You need at least six or seven um, to get any type of response. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just my, my, my two cents. Well, okay, so that's um, – well, Dublin's a very, very small city, but Pleasanton is right next to them, right? I mean, it's – they're right next to them. Oh, let me pull my map. Pleasant. I mean, if, you look on the other side, if you go south on that uh, on the other side of the freeway, that's that Pleasanton. Yeah, right where yeah. you're at. I'm going up for uh, Thanksgiving. If you guys want to uh, meet up. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll be there for the full week. Oh. Oh, actually, you're gonna be in LA. I'm not gonna be. You're, you're gonna be in uh, Paris. No, Italy. Right. Yeah, but and I'm gonna be. You're gonna be around then. I am. Okay. All right. Yeah, we could definitely do that. But if you start together with John, John's up here. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have a client here, client here, and then my brother lives here, so we're gonna be staying right here. Cool. Yeah. I mean, so how did you get that line around Pleasanton like that? I mean, Dublin like that. I just did Dublin CA. Oh, I see. Okay. Do Pleasanton, see what the outline of that. Pleasanton CA. Wow, it looks smaller. No, yeah, it's actually, it's, I think it's probably bigger. But... But um, one other tactic that we do always do for a plumbing company is we'll build a geographic-based page for their service. You know what I mean by that? 
You mean like on their home page when they click in, it'll be specific to them? Um, no, I'll just show you an example here. So courtesy plumbing, if you know, I mean, if we're looking at West Covina, you know, the page is West Covina Plumbing Company, City of West Covina, West Covina, West Covina. So oh, then therefore, see, yeah. when we bring people over to this particular page who search for a company, a plumbing company in West Covina, you know, they're, they're kind of in the right spot. The courtesy plumbing also is in other in other areas or I'm not quite sure what is courtesy plumbing is is that the name of it they're just a, the name of a, yeah they're just a local plumbing company right so there's another surrounding um, city you're going to click on that and it's going to say it's basically going to be the same uh, uh, click on Pasadena okay not very good, but it, this converts at you know 20, 20, 30 percent. So it's just kind of telling people they're in the right area. Whereas if we go back to you know your website, we just want to tell people that you're in the right area. So you'd have a Dublin page. Got it. And then whatever city you're launching next, you'd have a page for them. Be like coming soon to a to a city near you click here and then what i also do is, you know i mean if, like if somebody on facebook says hey when you come into my city i would quickly build a page for them coming to your city soon click here to give your email address and i'd send them that link <laughs> just messing yeah, actually had a, we have a, we have a couple of those um we should be capitalizing on those yeah Another good example for you is uh, 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Do you know those guys? Uh-huh. They went from city to city to city, you know, just just putting those trucks. And their best form of advertising is putting those trucks just on the side of the street until the city comes by and yells at them. Uh -huh. But uh, that guy's got a pretty successful – I think he's a Canadian. He's got a pretty successful story uh, on how he just – hated school and he bought a little dump truck and went around picking up people's trash and now it turned it into a multi-million dollar business yeah yeah it's a very successful company yeah so any questions for okay. me Jill Jill what do you think you've been kind of quiet I'm just listening I'm 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 just the bystander <laughs> <laughs> Does some of this make sense, or is it kind of like way out there? No, no, it makes sense. It, I think it's a matter of Jason digesting it and kind of deciding what route he wants to go. I'm just the sounding board. Gotcha. So you can tell yeah, I'm, pretty, yeah. I'm pretty excited about uh, the, the business, and I think that uh, I want nothing more than you to be successful and just – you know, know your numbers really, really well, and therefore, when you do look to expand, it's just a matter of here are the fundamentals. It worked here. All we need to do is make it work there. And once you get that one success story, you can um, break it down. Yeah, I know. It seems, seems. I mean, it definitely seems logical that that would be, a, you know. A good way to um, do micro marketing. I mean, you know, other than boot, boots on the ground, which is, I mean, it's a, effective, but it's, it, you know, I don't know. You're only getting one impression, right? It's difficult to scale. Whereas me, with a, you know, like I, I'm, I just took on a client as a community church. So community meaning, you know, three and four streets away. They're only looking for people that are three or four streets away so I can follow hashtags, so I can make them a big fish in a small pond. And that's kind of what you want to be. You want to be the biggest fish you possibly can be in a small pond. Now, is there enough food for you to eat in that pond? That's, that's, the, the, that's the, the key thing that you need to uh, decide or you need to figure out. Yeah, I think that... Um... That's going to be the challenge. The, 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 you know, only acquiring one-time cleans is is not going to cut it. So I've got to I've got to figure out 
a way to convert these people into recurring revenue to make it all work. <clears throat> yes. Is there anything I can do for you? I think so, yeah. So do you want to think about money and, you know, a budget and what that would all entail and I mean yeah, well, it doesn't sound like you're spending any money online right now. Well, yeah, we had we spent seventy-five bucks last month, and two two advertising campaigns. <laughs> so seventy-five dollars. Yeah. You know, so from a budgetary standpoint, it's kind of hard because we don't know what's going to happen on the back end in terms of ROI. Meaning, like, nope. even if I was to get you a hundred phone calls, you know. You so say if I was to get you a hundred phone calls and just use random numbers and charge you a thousand dollars a month, that would be you know ten dollars a phone call, you know. But if you only get two deals from those hundred phone calls, that doesn't pay for a thousand dollars. So you're up up upside down on ROI. Mm -hmm. And that's why when I ask you, you know, average lifetime value or cost to acquire. You know, not knowing those numbers is kind of a shot in the dark for me. So I therefore I can't charge you, you know, three grand a month, knowing that you're come close to a return on investment. So, you know, given my interest, you know, I would come in at, you know, a thousand dollars a month to just mm -hmm. do what, you know, is part of our digital marketing strategy, which is personas taking on one city for a certain period of time you know, running ads and doing marketing, you know, and then just treating it strictly as a test. You know, what, what, what did you have in mind from a budgetary standpoint? I don't think we, I don't think we had a, a budget in mind. I mean, I think it's, um, I think we were, I mean, we're certainly spending yeah, we're certainly spending well over a thousand dollars a month. Um, in, on... in in advertising? Oh sure. Well, just in because just we... in the in the person that's been tagging the cans. Yeah, I mean we had you know a couple of young guys out there you know putting cat tags on cans, um, you know. So yeah, we're definitely spending that that kind of money. I mean we are getting you know we are and we are getting you know all of our work as a result of that. Yeah. Now, if in the phone tags, rings, if the phone rings, they're placing an order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's. I mean, that, that's. I guess that's the difference between the plumbing business and a and a trash can cleaning business. Once you pick up the phone, you're gonna be placing an order. Or, or not a high percentage of the time, they're not calling to 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 scout you out or yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. You know, to to get a feel for who you are, what your minimum diagnostic fee is, well, all of that. They, they just want you to come clean the can. Yes. And when they have the can cleaned, they're from what from, from what I can gather, they're a hundred percent of the time completely satisfied. That's awesome. So so. You know, you may not be selling to them again, but you, you know, they, they obviously they, they have a sphere of influence that you know. So, you know, I think, you know, I think that uh, although we're overpaying probably to generate the calls, the trickle down effect of that is what keeps you alive, you know, later on, right? Yep. So, Jason, I have this other business that uh, we've been following a bunch of the the trash trucks around. It's called honey cans, and we take jars of honey and dirt and sprinkle them all in the in the cans after they come and uh, empty the trash, and it'd be a nice compliment to your business. Yeah, we could we could partner. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah that uh, you know yeah the the, uh, have, the fish spray or the... fish spray. Yes, have your guys go around with uh, as they're putting uh, the tags on all the cans. Come with. Fish spray and honey and uh, bags of uh, flies. Flies are yeah. the worst. <laughs> Actually, they could, just put, they could just put a couple maggots in each can. Exactly. exactly. It's called increasing demand for your service. Exactly. exactly. 
All right. So, all right. So, if we if we pull the trigger on this thing, how long is the set uh, the, the 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 sort of the pre planning before you launch phase and um, you know and what is your availability to implement? So say if we were to start October 1st, just hypothetically, you know, we agreed, hey, $1,000, let's just test this out. You know, let's focus in on one geography because I'd probably want to only tackle one geography because it's not like we're going to say, hey, let's just, you know, focus in on California. It's like, no, that's not how you're going to make money, but focus in on one geography, um, go through the digital marketing strategy in terms of getting profiles built for you, installing Google Analytics, setting up conversion tracking, cleaning up some of these pages in terms of very, very specific call to action and offers, you know, maybe even setting up a, a specific landing pages um, that are going to increase conversion. Conversion is just, you know, whatever, you know, conversion would be somebody even clicking on a button. And, you know, we would get started day one. So, you know, if it was, you know, August 1st, that would be Saturday, you know, we would essentially be started on the campaign right away. And then seeing that it's a trial, you know, we got to uh, allocate the resources and also follow what I call the 80-20 rule. What are 20% of the activities that are going to yield 80% of the results? Because otherwise we're just running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Mm -hmm. But I'll guarantee, I'll, um, sorry, hold on one second. Sure. Jason, sorry about that. It's okay. But given a specific geography, and say if it is Pleasanton or Dublin, mm -hmm. all of our efforts are going to go into reaching as many people within that geography. So at least, you know, I mean, you look at your Google Analytics report, which you haven't done before, mm -hmm. and you said increase uh, traffic within Dublin has increased 300%. And our Facebook following for Dublin has increased 200%. Everything, you know, I, there's only one place to go, which is up and to the right. So it's kind of hard to, you know, we don't have a lot of history to go on. Yeah, right. right, right. So all my numbers okay. are going to look good no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, they... So it would be comparing it to what they've got so far just using paper advertising. That would be the metric to measure against. Yeah, which is, I think, my my initial reaction as far as picking another, another city, but... I understand your your uh, philosophy of just stay in. You you already penetrated that market. Already, people have already seen it, so that's one hit, right? And then you're building, layering on top. I, mean, I get that. I get the logic. Um, but it'd be interesting. Yeah, I think Jill's point is, is if you took uh, do that same do that same grid for Livermore, California. All right. Yeah, I mean, we did, we did, we did do fifteen hundred homes in Alameda before they, before they. Uh, but now shut us down. What made you choose these 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 towns? Well, so Alameda has a high density. So if you if you just look on, I mean, if you just do a, 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 a satellite image of Livermore, you can sort of take a look at the housing stock there, and you can get a feel for what it is. You're looking for high density, you know, um, you know, high density housing, you know, small lots. I mean, Livermore is not a great example of it, but. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at—I mean, just look at that kind of stuff, right? Is there there's no not a disposable income. In other words, like, what's the average household income in Livermore? Yes, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, I just know it's expensive to live there. I mean, yeah, you know, it's expensive to live there. But so if you if you like that's not like that stuff was not good. But if you zoom out, keep going. So uh, to the right. 
Let's see. Like right in here? Yeah, like this stuff, yeah, right there. That, uh, yeah, that, that this stuff, yeah, like around that, that stuff. There, there you go. That's that's the the target market. That kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you know you'd want neighborhoods like this. Because again, your number one strategy is word of mouth. But how do you enable word of mouth to happen? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would assume, and again, a lot of times when I assume I'm completely wrong, but you want high net worth areas who, you know, have disposable income. You know, and nice, it may not be little more. I mean, nice homes that are, that are extremely dense. Yeah. So when you're driving down that street, you're getting, you know, your truck is being exposed, right? Where are you where are you pulling the net worth data from? Um, you can just you can just Google it. In other words, like um, I've I've seen it a, a million times in a million different places. Let, watch watch this. M I T N J T D N. So if you just type in um, Manhattan Beach, I think the Wikipedia page gives you um, average household income. Mm, right. Look, it automatically average household income, um, you know, right here. It just automatically comes up. So let's see, Livermore. It'll be interesting to see if Livermore, yeah, right here. So look, there's, you know, medium income. Um, now watch this one. If I do Pleasanton, or let's see. So this was 97. You know, it's quite a big of a jump, you know, to 112. Let's do Pleasanton. That was Pleasanton. That was Dublin. Oh, that was Dublin. Pleasanton, it jumps up a little bit more. Um, but anyway, you know, I mean, you can, you know, that I'm not saying, you know, a lot of times the people who in the, are in the richest neighborhoods are the biggest pain in the ass, too. Um, you also want to segment it by demographic. You know, in Pleasanton, there's a ton of, hopefully I'm not offending anybody, but Hope there's a ton of Indian people in Pleasanton. Well, that yeah, I think it, uh, I mean I think I shared this with you. That the the people that really like this service and it's, 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 we found it to be true are uh, Indian and Asian people. Yeah, I'm surprised about the Asian. The Indian people, I'm not because I know that they eat a lot of stinky food and they like to be clean. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just joking. Yeah. I think the Asians like to just they like things tidy. And they don't necessarily want to do it themselves. Yeah. You know, we have a huge Asian community here up in Palos Verdes. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of my plumbing companies complain about them a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's totally different. That's more about negotiating, you know, a $1,000 home services bill versus, you know, totally staying clean and tidy. Right. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's the thing. You know, I, mean, I think they do tend to be on the cheaper side, just – as a generalization, but you're again, you're talking about a, you're talking about a thirty-five dollar, you know, cost, not a thirty-five hundred dollar remodel, yeah. where they're going to nickel and dime you until you they drive you insane. Exactly. So just on the spammy front, you know, we would take this area of next door. Do you know what I mean by that? This this is an area of Livermore. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then next door breaks it down by this. So what I would do is I would, you know, on the spammy front, and I'm not saying I would do this, and I'm not doing this for $1,000 a month, but jumping in that community and seeing the conversation, seeing what's going on. You know, I know that there's a lot of people asking for babysitters in that area. Does anybody know a good pool cleaner? And I would start to answer some of those questions, kind of embed myself in this little next door neighborhood. How do you do that with not when you're not in that community? I thought the whole thing about next door was you had to be in the community. Um, <laughs> you just I can't, change you know, your IP address to that community. Oh no! All I gotta do is just say, "Hey, can you invite me into this community? Watch this." So. Um, so all I got to do is, you know, I mean, Nextdoor doesn't freaking police this crap. They're, you know, a venture-funded company. So here I'm in my local community. Um, 
you know, all I got to do is get an invite or spam my way in or say, hey, Alan, you know, I mean, it's not hard. <laughs> and by the way, watch, watch this. You know, what I mean, another thing you can do, and I'm not saying you're going to do all these, these tactics. You know how Craigslist works, right? So if I do site, uh, you know, so another, yeah. thing, you know, I mean, you could do Craigslist and just spam everybody. So Craigslist is also, you know, specific to a, a general area. And, you know, there's right. tools that'll just scrape Craigslist emails from anybody who posted any furniture within Manhattan beach. And, um, you know, so if you post furniture in Manhattan mm -hmm. beach, you know, or Dublin or Livermore, you know, give me your email address and then spam them. There are many different hacks out there. I'm not saying you do that, but you know, for if before I launch a website, mm -hmm. I might put a bunch of content on that website all specific to that area. So put all the news related to Livermore on a site and then let Google crawl that site over and over again. So now that site has domain authority for that general topic. Anyway, we're getting way off base. But anyway, give it some thought. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Um, yeah, right. I'd be well, interested in, um, in working on this. It'd be, it'd be fun. Okay. All right. That sounds awesome. Um, we're going to we'll talk about it and figure out uh, a way.